Hey guys, Kurt from Time Machine Transport. So, I had to take a few days off. I had to clean the shop. I couldn't stand working in this mess. So anyways, um, the passenger side is done. Kingpins are a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> there's, no, there's no doubt about it. Um, anyways, I had a problem here. So what was happening is when I set my bottle jack on the bottom, well here I'll show you. So if I were to take the kingpin and once the housing goes on here, it's about like this. I can't get my bottle jack. There's really no clearance underneath there. So what I'm what I did was I actually started the kingpin. I don't know if I'm going outside the box here, but this is the bottom of the of the assembly. Um, I actually started it and got it down because there's the bearing. I well here I'll show you on the other side. So this is the one. This is the bearing that has to go in, right? That ridge on the bottom. That's exactly how it sits. I'll take this. So as you can see right there, it's got to sit like that. Well, the other videos I was watching, and this is what I don't understand about YouTube, or not, not YouTube, but the guys and gals that put stuff on YouTube and don't explain what they're doing. Like they just put their camera down and start videotaping. Like they don't explain like everything you have to do. And that's why I created my channel. And I'm not a mechanic. I don't pretend to be a mechanic. But I can figure out a lot of shit. So, anyways, um, when you put this whole entire assembly, and this is super heavy, and what was happening was when I was trying to start the kingpin, this bearing was moving. You couldn't line up the hole. You have to line up the hole with the hole, right? And so you got to kind of. So this is the bottom of it. So you have to start the kingpin, right? And then that's got to sit in there and you got to try to hit that so it's completely lined up perfectly, right? Well, try to do that when you're trying to jack up a truck and you're on and this thing's on an angle. So you got to get your your jack, your bottle jack, you got to get it completely flush with the top of the kingpin or the bottom of the kingpin. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a few videos on it. I think I'm on part like five or whatever of eight videos. It was supposed to be four, then it was going to be six. Now it's eight. So I had a problem. My bottle jack was down here, right? I started the kingpin first into the housing. And then I put my bottle jack underneath there. And as I was raising or, you know, lifting the truck with the pump, um... The, it was lifting the truck and I had lubed the bushings and everything those two little copper pieces I was talking about I lubed the inside of those very well I thought anyways um, and it was lifting the whole entire truck up so I couldn't get that thing to seat so it finally seated but there was still about this much showing on the bottom so I literally left it overnight with it up and then I placed my other jack underneath there just and the wood just in case it did fall um, or it did, did actually go up overnight and it didn't I came back the next morning and it was still sitting in the exact same position I could not get that thing up into to finish into the housing so I, I'll show you guys a little trick I don't know if I mean if I'm not doing the mechanics code of properness I don't know but it worked for me and I'm going to share it with you guys. Um, but anyways, so I ran into a little problem. So while, while the bottle jack was down here and it literally sat overnight, when I came back the next day in desperation mode, I was, I was hitting the top of this with a sledgehammer. Er, wrong. Don't do that, Kurt. Don't do that, guys. I, don't, I must have dented the top 
So when I went to go thread the new um, lube plate in there with the, with the grease fitting, it would not thread. I mean, I tried everything, man. I went to Advance Auto to see if I could get a re-thread kit. They had nothing. I tried filing it. I tried wire brushing it. I took a little grinder to it, trying, and it, it would not thread down. So what I did was I took the new fitting and I went on our grinder wheel and I grinded off the threads like this all the way around it. Just enough, not too much, but just enough to where it actually sat flush in there. And then I got a, um, an epoxy. I just did it this morning because I cleaned out the shop. As you can see, this is the way I like to work. Not in a freaking mess like a grenade went off in here. Um, so I'm not going to mess with it for a few days uh, because it says it's five minutes set time, but you got cure time and everything else on it. But when you do that, once you grind off those little threads, if, if you have the same problem, um, clean this very well with a wire brush and then with a uh, brake cleaner. And then also hit the whole top of this with a wire brush and then clean it with brake cleaner. Let it sit for a little bit, wipe it off with a clean rag and then start fresh. Hopefully this is gonna be a solution. And I'll show you what happened when they did the kingpins last time with piece of shit Greg Horsfall. But anyways, before I actually pump the grease down in here, I am gonna run Silicone really is a great adherent. I, silicone's my go-to. I've already epoxied it. It's a 4500 PSI epoxy. Um, I used... Uh, I must have threw away. Anyways, it's a two-part epoxy. It's supposed to work well. We'll see. If not, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. But anyways, hopefully, and I'm going to actually go over this with silicone, the whole entire top pieces to kind of back it up. It probably, and, you know, if you're a mechanic and you're watching this, you're like, this guy's a freaking Yahoo. But hey, man, desperate time to call for desperate measures. So anyways, this side is done. When you guys pull these off, check all your grease fittings. Make sure that they're not broken. This one was broken, and I put another, pe another grease fitting in there. Um, and then when I took this housing off, there was another broke grease fitting on this one that I replaced. Anyways, you will have, uh, let's see, where is it? Right here. The driver's side on a, fr on a Freightliner Century class, you're going to have two bolts. And when I put it all back together, I'll show you guys. But you will have two large bolts that sit inside here that connect your steering uh, rod or whatever. Up on up here, and then it goes in, and I'll have to show you guys. But anyways, I clean. When you guys get it all apart, clean it very well. I went through like ten cans of brake cleaner. So, anyways, here's the problem. This this shows you what a piece of shit Greg Horsfall is. And I also shame on me because I I lubed my truck several times and never caught this. The He must have ran, instead of pulling this off, before he took the kingpin and, and tried removing the old kingpin out. This was broken. And he had, he had just, it was just on there. And I, I never noticed it. It was, it seemed like he was catching grease, but I don't think it was. Anyways, I'll show you why it's this, this kingpin was, was bad on the driver's side. If you look, see how crooked that is? See that? Look at how crooked that is. So Greg Horsfall, being the big turd he is, he never changed this bushing. I'll put money on it. Or he did, and he didn't seat it correctly. He did it with like a freaking hammer and a, and a flat tip screwdriver. Now this one here, you can see the divots that I talked about on the last one. So this one looks like it was changed. This one here was either never changed or done incorrectly. And that's why you have to press them in evenly because that's what's going to happen. 
And when that happens, your kingpin is going to wobble in there. And these are really super important, your bushings. I think that's what they're called. I was calling them sleeves in the last video. Sleeve, bushing, I don't, like I said, I don't know the mechanics code for, for wordage. So I'm not a mechanic. But anyways, I'm going to put you guys on pause. And then I'm going to remove this. And I'm going to show you, once I get it all back together, I'm going to show you. But getting these pressed in evenly, like I said, we have a press. I moved our press from that location over to here when I detailed the shop over the weekend. So, I prefer to work like this. I got rid of my hillbilly workbench. I'm going to show you guys how I started it after I um, remove these two sleeves so hopefully it won't take a long time and my video won't uh, cancel out when I put you guys on pause okay guys I'm back alright so this is the only way it came out and the inside of the housing got gouged so I took the brake home I took some 400 grit right there tried to clean the inside of the housing and then I took the brake cone and uh, cleaned it up after I did it with the 400 grit I don't know I'm, I'm hoping that I don't have to get a whole new housing um, it was gouged and I'm I'm, ugh, I'm so mad at that if I ever see Greg Horsfall man I'm gonna fucking pop you in your fucking cocksucker I swear yeah I said that that's how mad I am at that guy. Anyways, there's no way, no way he changed this, man. He tried, see, my, my guess is he attempted to remove it, and it got all um, cockeyed on him, and he just left it. He, nah, just left it. Nah, not a big deal. Uh, it's only uh, an expensive piece, and not only are you getting paid to do a job that you're supposed to do. Uh, I'm, I'm venting, I'm sorry. There's no way he changed this. No way. Look at how gaudy, how, how gnarly that is. Oh, I'm so mad at that guy. Oh, if I ever see you. Anyways, I'm going to put you guys on pause. I'm going to show you how I started the kingpin. I got to do the bottom or the top sleeve there now. And I'm just going to pause you guys. All right, guys. Got the other sleeve in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a bunch of grease inside both sleeves and coat the inside. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and insert my, uh, my kingpin. And when I do that, I'm going to make sure because... Where is it? You got these two bolts right here, top and bottom. The long one... That's what your bolt looks like. It's flat on the one side, like that. Now the flat part goes towards your kingpin. Uh, don't make the mistake I did. I thought the rounded end went towards the kingpin. So where's the kingpin? Anyways, I'll show you in a second. So anyways, when you insert your kingpin, because I'm actually going to start it up on my, on my cart here. I'm going to start it here because... The guys on the videos, they were starting it on the bottom. Like I said, once your housing goes on and the kingpin, my bottle jack is tall. So that means I gotta jack this truck up another foot. I'm not doing that because what's gonna happen is gonna be more on an angle. And you have to get that bottle jack is gotta be directly in line with the with the kingpin. So if Let's see, where is my kingpin? Uh, what I do with the kingpin? Oh man, what I do with the kingpin? Boy, it sucks getting old, man. You forget a bunch of shit where stuff is. <laughs> uh, let's see. Where the hell? Oh, I think I left it on this side. Yep, there it is. So, make sure my face doesn't drip on my phone that's how I end up stopping videos because so when you're kingpin you got these two notches on it right top and bottom one there one there so it's got to go in like that so your notch 
lines up with your hole. So when I start this, like I said, with the housing on there, my, my kingpin's gonna be about eight inches off the floor, six inches off the floor. I got, I'm gonna have to jack my truck up another foot. And then like I said, you have to hold, you gotta get that bearing in there. So I'll show you a little trick. I don't know if it's a trick. I don't know if mechanics are gonna look at this and be like, this dude's freaking stupid. It works for me, it may not work for you. It was a lot easier to do it this way, the way I did it up on the cart. So, or on my hillbilly workbench when I had the filing cabinet in here. Anyways, you have to kinda, because you're upside down now, because your brake chamber's on the bottom, so that actually is the bottom of the housing. So my kingpin is gonna go in like that. So you have to make sure that you know which one's top and which one's bottom. So if I'm on my, that's my brake chamber obviously. So the inside of the housing has gotta be oh, on the bottom. So that means I gotta switch this like that. So make sure that you have it like so. So your bottom notch is on the inside of your housing and your top notch is on the outside of your housing where you're where your studs are. So anyways, I'm gonna put you guys back on pause because I'm gonna go ahead and lube up the inside of those bushings and then I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna start it and I'm gonna get the uh, the bearing uh, put on, what I do with the bearing. And my buddy Josh told me, hey Josh, that you gotta make sure you lube the bottom of this bearing. And I, I also, oh, actually not, this is not the bottom. This is the bottom with the ridge. So it's gonna sit in there like that. Well, my problem is, like I said, when you put this whole housing on and you slide this in here, you gotta line this up with your kingpin and your, whatever it is, your axle. So that piece has gotta sit on there and then you're trying to start your kingpin and you got your other housing on here and you gotta try to get it exact. I, I, don't, I don't think that's easy at all. I, I think the way I'm doing it is a lot easier. So, um, like I said, so my buddy Justin, you got to grease this, and I use the high temp grease, and uh, I'm going to grease the inside of the bearings. Now, on the instruction, it said it's a pre, um, pre lubed gasket or seal or something like that, but I'm going to throw grease in here anyways. More grease doesn't hurt, I wouldn't think. So, anyways, I'm going to grease this, and then grease the inside of the bearings and the inside of the bushings. Now I'll put you guys on pause and I'll come back. Okay guys, so you can see I started my kingpin from the bottom. I got my bottom notch on the inside because that's my lowest point. My top one right there is already seated down in there. Now, this is what I mean about that bearing. So the bearing, once I greased it and I greased the bushings, I brought it down and now the bearing, it's only about maybe a sixteenth of an inch. So don't do it too much or you won't, or you're gonna have to pop the kingpin back up because you want, see that's the problem. So when you're trying to put this big heavy ass housing in there and trying to bring your kingpin from the bottom and push it, push it, push it. Now you gotta try to get it through this hole, the bearing hole, at the same time to line everything up. I think that was super difficult. I tried it that way, it didn't work very well. So I was getting super frustrated and I said there's gotta be a better way. So what I did was I just put the kingpin in there, popped this on there and just kinda kept hitting her down, not super hard but even pressure on there, and don't get too crazy, don't get gorilla on it, but, cause she'll go down, if you lube the inside of those bushings, she should go pretty pretty easy. I mean, you gotta get a little hard on it, but not not crazy hard. Chewing my mouth, sorry. So, anyways, I am going to put the, the whole housing onto the axle, and I'll show you guys what I did for my little trick to, uh, well, well, we'll try to push it up from the bottom with the bottle jack. I'm gonna use an air jack. Um, 
and we'll see if it keeps lifting up the truck, lifting up the truck. I'll show you a little trick that I did. Or I'll just go ahead and just show you the trick that I did. And I'm going to put you guys on pause. Hopefully uh, it won't uh, cancel out the video. All right, guys, I'm back. Now, so my bottle jack just took a shit. I don't know if it doesn't have enough oil in it or it's just old. Anyways, I have these uh, air jacks. What I did was I ran a chain underneath the jack and brought it up to the top and I choked it with a bolt. Because what was happening is as I was raising the or pushing the kingpin up into the housing, the truck kept lifting and it's not coming down. I, I don't, and the other side, I had the same problem with the other side. Like I said, it was, um, I left it sit overnight and the weight of the truck still did not bring the pin up into the housing. So I was thinking and thinking and thinking. I'm like, there's got to be a better way. So it worked. So I'll show you guys. Like I said, you just run a chain underneath, over the top. You choke it with a bolt. And what happened is instead of the truck, instead of the, the bottle jack pushing the truck up, it's actually the chain will prevent the truck from going up and it does its job so make sure obviously you're centered in the hole and this is why I started everything because trying to get that pin trying to get this bearing to stay where it is and then the the, the kingpin going up in there if this is off centered you're just going to be ruining that, that bearing I would imagine so uh, here we go Stay close to that bitch. And you can see the you can see the pin going up in there. Oh! Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> that bitch is tight. Anyways, <laughs> it didn't do it like that on the other side, so uh, that's why you stay clear of it, man. So I'm gonna put you guys on pause. Alright guys, I'm back. Alright. So, I made a mistake when I ran the chain. I ran it on the front of the axle, and then I came around here, so when it applied tension, the chain slipped off. So you gotta run it underneath your jack, up, and then on the other side of the axle, so it doesn't slip off. That was my mistake. And then you choke the chain, choke the chicken, as, as tight as you can up top, and I just tried it, and. What I did was I took a tuning fork and I, I I wedged it up underneath there so it can be as even as possible underneath there. I do have a small gap here, but I don't know, we'll see. So deal breaker with my wife and I if I got to wear an eye patch. That's it, so that's my, that's my bottom out of my jack. I'm going to put you guys back on pause. Alright guys, I'm back. What I did was I had to lower the truck again, and then there's slack up here at the chain, so you gotta re-choke it. And it's going up there nice and easy. So now, I'm at the bottom. And I'll take my socket. I'm gonna put you guys on pause. I'm gonna put my socket 
on the base or on the top of the jack just to finish it off because my the round part of the uh, bottle jack won't fit up into the into the housing so i'm going to grab my inch and three eighths um socket all right guys i'm back i got my it wasn't the inch and three eighths the inch and five sixteenths because the inch and three eighths actually goes flush with it but my chain broke it's a baby chain i, I didn't even think that that little chain was going to work at all but it's the easiest to deal with instead of a real girthy chain because obviously it's lighter but uh, that thing was taking some pressure on it so you can see the problem here so my jack underneath the truck is off the axle and the weight of the truck is literally sitting on that pin and it's not going in i don't know if this is right or not right or whatever but I don't know man, Those these pins are super, super tight in here man, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, so, like I said, I am not a mechanic, but everything seems to be going in quite well, well, now, being that I know what I'm doing, I was very, very frustrated doing the passenger side, and I, like I said, I had to take a couple days off because I was getting so frustrated, so, but that's the dilemma right there, you can see the jack or the axles off the jack and all the weight of the truck on this side is sitting on that pin and it's still not a hundred percent seated here it might go down a little bit but i'll probably just wait to see if the weight of the truck brings it down but i'm gonna put you guys on pause and uh i gotta make sure that i bring it to where it needs to be right at the right at about the top of the, of the bushing there um like i said uh, nobody's really on these on these videos on YouTube nobody's really going into detail like where to seat the kingpin what happens if it doesn't go down blah 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 all this other stuff it's like it's super frustrating man so anyways I'll put you guys on pause all right guys I'm back got everything seated in removed the jack and the chain um, now there's two bolts you can see one is longer than the other and and you know these other guys didn't didn't say any of this like which one goes on the top which one goes on the bottom how to you know put them in blah 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 so it's got a flat part like i said the flat part is going to go towards the groove in the kingpin So that flat part right there. So the short one of the two is going to go on the top. On the top side there and it's going to feed from the back side to the front. And then your longer one is going to go from the front to the back. You're going to also put grease. I use this uh, high temp grease, the Mystic, for our grease gun. So lube the whole entire bolt, both of them, really well before you stick them in. Now that flat part is meant to sit against the flat part of the kingpin. And that's so it can't move inside there. Or it helps spin the kingpin, I guess. Anyways, I was trying to put it in the first time like this. And I was like, what the hell? And I'm like beating on this thing. And then I pulled it out. I'm like, oh, duh. So anyways, it's got to go flat like that. So so I'll, uh, I'm going to lube these both up. I'll put you guys on pause, and then we'll go from there.